Now the question is then, in which models can I compute the bond price, theoretical bond price, explicitly? And uh, a large class of such models is called, uh, are called affine models of the term structure, affine meaning linear really. Well, we are going to do the following. We are going to say, well, bond price in a deterministic world, it's just exponential of the interest rate times t, so linear function of the interest rate. Um, maybe we, we in these random models, uh, something similar will happen. So we are hoping, we are hoping to have this this thing uh, up here. Uh, we are hoping that the bond price might be expressed as uh, exponential of the linear of a linear function of the interest rate of the short rate, where where the coefficients in the linear function are not random, but maybe they are deterministic functions both of time today, so the small t is today, and maturity. So for different maturities, bonds with different maturities, maybe you get different coefficients a and b here. Okay, so a and b are deterministic functions deterministic functions of, of uh, time and maturity. And we are hoping that uh, this, uh, this might be the case, that the form is exactly of this exponential type. So what I'm going to do in the next two slides is try to see under which, for which models this really is the solution and what, how to compute capital A and capital B if in, the, in those models. What, what will happen, I will derive differential equations for A and B as deterministic functions. So I will need a boundary condition for those in, uh, functions. Well, we have this boundary condition that uh, at the end, the bond pays $1. So that just means that P of capital T, capital T is 1. And uh, that actually means that both A and B, both functions, have to be 0 at capital T, capital T. Why? Because uh, at, this ha at capital T, capital T, this uh, has to be equal to, to 1 for t equal to, so for small t equal to capital T, uh, which means that the exponent has to be equal to 0, but it has to be equal to 0 for every value of r. I, I don't really know what uh, uh, what r e, e will be in the future. So it has to be 0 for every value of r. If I want it to be 0 for every value of r, then b has to be 0. Uh, and then once b is 0, then a also has to be 0. OK, so that, those are the boundary conditions. A and b have to be 0 at the end uh, to give me the value of $1 for the bond at the end at maturity. And OK, what do I know about the price? I know it satisfies the partial differential equation from the previous slide. And now I'm just rewriting that partial differential equation here. Instead of C, I'm using P because I put the boundary condition to be the bond price. So P is my notation for the bond price. OK, so again, the question is, in which models, meaning for which mu and for which sigma, for which functions mu, remember mu is a function of mu tr and sigma is a function of sigma of tr. The question is, for which functions mu of tr and sigma of tr, the solution to the differential, partial differential equation here is in fact of this form. Okay. Uh, so what am I going to do? I'm going to replace this form, exponential form, I will find its derivatives that I need, replace it in the partial differential equation, and see what I get. But I will do that only for special mu and for special sigma. It wouldn't work uh, in general, but uh, with the benefit of hindsight, knowing in advance what works, I will um, choose mu and sigma in a special way. Okay, so just to repeat so we don't have to come back to this slide, I'm going to substitute the, this exponential form that I'm hoping to have for my bond price, this one up here, 
I'm going to substitute in, in here by finding derivatives and that I need. And I'll choose special sigma and mu. And I will hope to compute, be able to compute A and B. Let's do that. What are my special uh, sigma and mu? Uh, well, they're not completely special. They're relatively general, but linear. Okay? Mm, I will assume so-called affine, or linear dynamics. Uh, mu, as a function of t and r, I'm going to assume is alpha of t r plus beta of t, where alpha and beta are deterministic. And similarly, I will assume that sigma squared is linear. It's gamma of t r plus delta of t where uh, gamma and delta are deterministic. So all of these coefficients are deterministic functions of uh, time. Uh, well, I'm misspelling deterministic. But OK, I'm just going to delete it. It's deterministic functions of time. Uh, and. Uh, well, it turns out this will, this will work. Right? Uh, if you have linear uh, functions uh, for mu and for sigma squared, where coefficients may depend on time, but otherwise they are linear in R, uh, it's the bond price can be computed as an exponential of A plus B R. And if you think about it, all of our models, except black Derman toy, which I told you doesn't work in continuous time, all other models really do have linear mu and r. Okay? It was mean reversion, which was a linear function for mu. And it was either constant in Wasserchek, and constant is a linear function, uh, or it was uh, square root of r. But square root of r squared is a linear function. Okay? That's, that's why you get the square root in the, in, the, in the Cox Ingers Ross model. That's why a square root works nicely from a mathematical point of view, because sigma squared is linear. And this is what you need. You need sigma squared to be linear. OK, if you then do that, if you replace mu and sigma with these expressions into the previous PDE here down in the bottom line, uh, if you do that and you replace this form, exponential form, for the bond price, you will get a PD after a little bit of calculus and a little bit of algebra, which I will let you either do on your own if you want or read in the book. Um, I'm not doing it here. It's, it's straightforward calculus and algebra. If you're comfortable with that, it should be easy. If you're not, that's OK. I'm just going to tell you here what the partial differential equation looks like. Okay? So if you do that, if you replace the exponential form for the bond price, compute its derivatives, replace mu by this mu here and this uh, sigma with this sigma here, sigma squared with this sigma squared here, you will get, uh, you will get the, uh, this, partial dif uh, this differential equation in the middle. Okay? And, uh, this one here. It splits into two terms, one term which doesn't depend on r, and then the other one which is linear in r. And because this has to be 0 for every r, then this part has to be 0, and separately this part has to be 0. They both have to be 0. Okay? So I get two equations for two unknown functions, a and b. I write this one first. So it's an equation for the function b which is a, as a function of time for fixed capital T. It's a function of small t and capital T. But here, it's a differential equation with respect to small t. That's the derivative with respect to small t. And then I also have differential equation for A uh, as, a, as, a, as a actually derivative of A, just some function of B. Okay? So how does this work in, in, in practice? This is a well-known ordinary differential equation. It's called a Riccati differential equation. And for example, if alpha and gamma are constant, you can solve it. Okay, if alpha and gamma are some complicated functions, then maybe you cannot explicitly solve it, but you can solve it numerically. Ba but uh, for simple alpha and gamma, you can solve it. And once you solve for b, 
you can also solve for a uh, because uh, why because you just integrate right this is derivative of a but then a itself of t t is going to be um, a of um, is some going to constant because you are integrating constant can always uh, there can be a constant there which uh, you determine from the boundary condition plus uh, it's going to be uh, integral from 0 to t of uh, beta b of u capital T minus 1 half uh, delta uh, b squared of u du. If you integrate, all, it's just integrate the right-hand side. Well, uh, there would be b squared u capital T here, which I didn't write. Okay, so, so once you compute b, and the first one doesn't depend on a, right? You just compute b from this one here. Uh, and then you and then you can compute a by integrating this right hand side here. Okay. And for example, there are explicit solutions in the Wasichek and Coxing and Ross models, uh, which is which is why uh, I told you that in Wasichek and Coxing and Ross there is an explicit solution for the bond prices. And this is how you find them. You solve these two equations, which gives you your a and b. And uh, once you have your A and B, you, you just plug it in here and you have your bond price. Right? And then you can do your calibration, um, meaning uh, you know, which p particular three parameters to choose to fit the bond prices, uh, the parameters for A, B, and sigma, low, lowercase a, b, and sigma. OK, so the, just to recap, this was a bit technical. Uh, or more than a bit, but uh, what the bottom line here, just to to say what we are doing here, the bottom line is in affine models. Okay, I'm just going to repeat what we learned here in affine models. You can see why I don't like to write too much on my slides with my uh, by hand because my handwriting is bad um, right so in affine models uh, you have um, p of t t is equal to e to the a t t plus or minus because minus minus b of t t r well r of t uh, where A and B can be computed, right? Where A and B can be computed from the differential equations. They can be computed. Uh, what are our fine models? Our fine models are those models in which mu is linear. So these are models in which dr is equal to uh, alpha uh, r plus beta dt. I think it was like this or other way around. But doesn't really matter. And so something like alpha r plus beta dt plus gamma r plus delta dw. Where alpha, beta, gamma, and delta can be functions of time and today's time and time to maturity. Okay? This is what we showed in the last two slides. In the models you know, of this type, uh, as the last equation that I wrote here, in the models of, of uh, this type here, uh, the bond price would look like this, where A and B can be computed. I gave you the differential equations that A and B have to satisfy. Okay, and that includes all the models that we mentioned, except the black Devon toy model. Okay, that's it for this set of slides.